Hi there. Hi, welcome back to Curious Collection. I'm Will. I'm Cinnamon. To begin with today, we want to thank Donna. She picked up some uh, really cute uh, bear figurines from mm -hmm. us. We shipped them out yesterday after we recorded our video, so we didn't get a chance to show them, but we do want to thank her for that. We really appreciate the support and those purchases. Yeah. And then we have another viewer, Chad C., who's actually really into ephemera. Mm -hmm. And so they've been uh, supporting us on our whatnot channel. So we want to yeah. thank them as well, even though we, you know, neither one of the people have told us that they wanted us to do this. We, we still feel compelled to. We do want to thank all of our <coughs> YouTube viewers. Like you guys are awesome. And you, the comments that you guys leave are so kind and it's, it's very, really, you know, really wonderful. Yeah. We, we really do this because we, we don't have all the answers, you know, we, we want community, right? Like you, you do better by surrounding yourself with other people, um, and, and, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other. So mm -hmm. we just, we really, really, really want to thank you guys all for all of the great input that you, that you give us and all of the support. It's just, it's just really, really awesome. So yeah. thank you. So getting back to that, you know, really well thought, comments we had a person and unfortunately we've lost the comment we lost their name uh we we made a note of the of the question that they had but we lost their contact but they basically said that they had retired a couple of years ago and so they're retirees much like a lot of our viewers mm -hmm. we have the analytics from our channel we can see that nearly 50 percent of the people that follow our channel are retirees or retirement age. So we've always talked about the fact that this would be a great side business right. for retirement. And so they had said that, you know, they had retired and they started feeling some, some emotions. So, you know, they, they missed working. Mm -hmm. They, they were feeling a little down, like they, they lacked purpose. And so they wanted to know what it is that we miss about working in the corporate environment right outside the home mm -hmm. um and uh, we absolutely love what we do we really really do we do we um, do so we don't want to conflate this right we're not considering going back to a corporate nope. environment no nope, we would not do that uh, <laughs> because we do love what we do um but you said we wouldn't do that with a we, caveat yeah if we, if if we, we have, have a choice yeah we will take care of our family first and foremost. Right, right. Um, but but there are some things that you miss when you work outside the home. And sometimes the life of reselling can be very lonely. Um, you know, not having those, those co-workers and building those relationships with other people outside the home is is really, really rough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I would say that, that that would be my number one thing. Um, is is the camaraderie with with your colleagues, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and that varies depending on what job you have uh, and what you think about the people you work with. Right? Is there something going on with that? I'm sorry, it's it's the girl. I'm sure. <laughs> I'll turn it off. Um, yeah, it is. So so that uh, the last job that I worked, um, my the nurse that worked with me was so amazing. And it was just the two of us because it was a very small hospice house. Um, so we worked so well together and it was awesome working with her. And like, she was it, she was my, my nurse that, you know, I worked with. So it was just the two of us and we had such a great relationship and she still comes over and visits with me. So that's awesome that I still get to keep that because mm -hmm. she was a great friend. There's other people that you're, that you work with and you're like, I do not want to work with this person. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I I miss, and I think we'll just go back and forth. But yeah, you know, one thing that I miss is having a consistent schedule. I knew in in my previous job, my my shift started at four a.m. and I would work until twelve thirty p.m. and I mm -hmm. knew that at twelve thirty five I was out the door and in the car. Yeah. Yeah. No, when you, when you step down from management and, and you were an hourly right. employee. So, so again, it depends on the job. I worked does. in management and I was working 12 hours a day or more. Six days six a week. Six days a week. It, that was miserable. And you were never off the clock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I miss the consistent paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so that was something that we actually talked about was that 
my the the employer that I had detested over time. They they paid their employees well, and they expected all work to be done within our paid hours mm -hmm. and no overtime because they did not want to pay time and a half. Whereas the career field that you came from, there was almost an expectation that there was going to be overtime. Every there day. was, and but and it wasn't because you weren't getting your work done. It's right. because they were they short weren't. Staff. Yeah, yeah. So like there was always the base pay though. So you worked your three twelves. That's what you were guaranteed. Um, and then there was always extra shifts, and there was a lot of guilt that went into well you need to pick up an extra shift because you don't want to short staff everybody else because it's my fault that they can't schedule more people. Mm -hmm. um, or that they refuse to hire more people. Right, right. right. Um, so I miss, but I do miss not stressing about, make you know, every other Friday I was getting my check and it was going to yeah. be a very bare minimum of those three twelves every week. Right. We, so, knew, we knew what our base pay was right. every month. And then we if knew. we wanted, to, if we wanted extra money because we had a vacation coming up, I'd be like, eh, okay, I'll pick up an extra shift this week. No big, mm -hmm. you know? So I kind of miss that too. Whereas so, with eBay, you can't just say, oh, well, I'll just pick up an extra shift today and I'll make $300. There's, yeah. There's no guarantees. It doesn't matter how many <laughs> hours you put in. There's no guarantees that that money's going to be there. Yeah. So I miss your overtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, don't you just love it? <laughs> so, you know, and, and I do, I do want to like be open with people in mm -hmm. that, you know, the job that you had was a good paying job, but yeah. when they would pay overtime, they would give bonuses. They would shift differentials. Right. There, there was, was a lot that would go pay. into that. Yeah. Yes. So the people that are out there, if you're not working in the American healthcare system, you really should because there is opportunity. <laughs> or don't because the, I left. <laughs> the, right. I was going to say the base pay wasn't. If money great. is driving you, there is money to be had. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I'm, I miss those big overtime checks. Mm -hmm. um, That's real. They were, they were nice. Yeah. Um, so do you have I something? Miss, I miss being able to to work with good people who knew what they were doing and you could you could collaborate with them and network with them and you could learn like there were times that like I would work with a certain charge nurse because I knew at the end of the day I would have learned something that would be better for my patients it would make me a better nurse and I wish I had that in reselling and and we look to YouTube for that, you know, but right, and we try to build relationships with other people that we interact with as well, other right. dealers and uh, and other resellers. But it was it was so much easier at the hospital when you're working with a bunch of people to be able yeah. to to glean and to become a better person because of their experiences and right. learning from them. Right. One of the one of the challenges in reselling is that you do you know occasionally you do come across someone who at least you assume has their stuff together and they know what they're doing and they don't want to tell you yeah, because they're afraid of competition. They're yeah. afraid that you're going to steal their idea, that you're going to be better at it than they are. Um, you know, and there, I see, were, there were nurses like that too, yeah. that tried to eat their young. Um, yeah. But, but the good ones, I, I really missed that part of it. Yeah. Um, I miss, and this is going to sound really cliche because people that are working in the corporate world or have worked in the corporate world in the last decade recognize the absolute absurdity of it. But I miss the pizza party. <laughs> I actually thought the same thing. <laughs> like, it was really nice when you walk in and there's a box of donuts sitting on the counter because he doesn't buy me a box of donuts no. because then I would yell no. at him because yeah. it costs too much and the sugar is too high and stuff. Yeah. But no, yeah. I totally get what you're well, saying. And that's, that, that's real. And so, again, I had worked, you know, worked in this retail environment for a decade and you know, anytime the I think I honestly believe it was any time that management new staff morale was down, knew that they were expecting more than what they were paying you for, then they would give you a pizza party, mm -hmm. which would literally cost them a couple hundred dollars. And that was cheaper than actually paying people yeah. what the work was worth. So, you know, yes, they're ripping you off, but nobody's buying me free pizzas today. No. 
So no. eBay hasn't sent me a single pizza. Can you believe it? I think we should totally get on them about that. <laughs> they need to give us a pizza party. <laughs> so I I honestly miss the pizza party. I, I miss mm-hmm. all the junk food in the break room. Now, on a different note, and I think it was a direct result of that type of thing, I had gone to the doctor and they said that my sugar was out of range. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, all of those pizza parties, not good for not, you. Not good for you. Don't mm-hmm. don't eat that crap. No, no, so, we don't eat that crap. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to add, like, yeah. be, be careful with all that free junk. It 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 is appealing, but it mm-hmm. can definitely cause you harm. So yeah. What else? Um, I I kind of miss the on that on that line like i kind of miss those bonuses like i've worked places where they're like you know where you do get some of those those accolades right like the daisy award or you know uh, excellent service of excellence or employee of the month right employee of the month i'm i'm a people pleaser <laughs> And and I do. I I'm work, gonna get some some gold star stickers. I need a gold star. I do. I need a gold star sticker and a cookie. Like that's right. what we should do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I will say that reading the comments, reading the feedback, yeah. is very much that. So that helps tremendously when you get those feedback and they're all like, oh my goodness, this was my dad's plane or, oh my goodness, like this was a phenomenal piece of jewelry. I just love it so much. That's kind of the same kind of thing. Yeah. One of the things that I see people mention is employee benefits. The benefits that that come from corporate work. Now we have our own healthcare that we buy out Mm -hmm. of pocket. When I worked in the corporate world, we had employer provided healthcare that was excellent. Insurance. Now, when I left that job and we were depending upon yours, not so great anymore. The, the healthcare industry is notorious for poor quality insurance, which makes no and I'm sense not saying that brain. to attack the industry. I'm yeah. just saying that that's a reality of the industry yeah. is that they're not funding it at the same level as some of the other businesses out there. Right. And so, in this specific case. We were on one of those catastrophic plans. It was costing mm-hmm. us four or five hundred dollars a month. So it was costing us significantly more than what we pay now. Yeah. And was terrible insurance. Yeah, it really was. But we did have more money, so we were able to put more into our retirement plan. Honestly, mm-hmm. like since I started working for us, we have not been able to put money away into our retirement right. really. So I do want to make it clear for people is that if you're a full-time reseller or even if you're a part-time reseller and you're working another part-time job and you don't have employer covered benefits, you can buy them. Mm -hmm. Call your local agent. Let them know what your finances are. Let them know what your situation is. They will set you up with a plan. It's going to cost less than what you think. I guarantee it. Our insurance now is cheaper than when I was working in healthcare and, Mm -hmm. um, and it's better than when I was working in healthcare. Right. So right. it didn't measure up to worked. what I was, what I had no. through my employer, but, right. but again, nobody d- measured up to that. They're all different. Mm-hmm. All company provided insurances and benefits are all different. And right. even when it comes to like those retirement savings accounts, we've, yeah. we've, we've seen had, huge differences in that as well. Yeah. We've had like pensions that you think were going to be great. And it ends up being like, you have to be vested 25 years and then it's $200 a month or something ridiculous. Right. So, right. but yeah, I could totally see that, you know, there are some, some benefits so the, on fleet cars, you know, things yeah, like you that. You had a fleet car, but it cost us $400 yeah, it wasn't a, a really month. Good benefit. And so, it wasn't a great car. Yeah. We, <laughs> So, you know, uh, that's one of the things is that we had the fleet rental. And so they took the $400 a month right out of her paycheck Mm -hmm. to have a company car. Now, they did cover the cost of fuel. Yeah. Um, We were able to use it for personal use. Yeah. And, you know, oil changes and maintenance. But we were paying $400 a month. Mm -hmm. We don't buy new cars. Mm -hmm. So having that car payment every month. Not worth it. Yeah, that squeezed. Yeah. But it is a benefit and right. it's certainly and some something want that. that some people could, could see, you know, especially if you have bad credit yeah. or if you're hard to insure. So I would say, and again, this is just another silly one. Um, working in healthcare, like I wore scrubs every day. 
So like there was no thought process in like now I I have to think and and I like getting dressed up. So I like, you know, matching my jewelry and stuff like that. But there were days that like, okay, I'm just I'm going to throw my my hair up in a bun and I'm going to throw my scrubs on and I'm out the door. It's the same thing every Mm -hmm. day. There's no thought there's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So again, like it's a silly one, but it's, it's certainly something that I kind of do miss about, about working outside of the home. I miss the employer matching funds. And I think this defines the difference between us. You're Mm -hmm. thinking about your wardrobe (laughs) and I'm thinking about money. And that's, that's That's why there's two of us. That's why we work together. (laughs) And uh, so employer matching funds. So if you're self-employed, like we are, we have to pay. Mm, you're talking about that. Okay. Well, I'm talking about all of it. Yeah. I'm talking about employer matched funds. So employers are going to be required to pay half your social security. They're required to pay half your Medicare contribution. Mm-hmm. There, That's a legal obligation. If you're an employer, we have to pay it all as being self-employed. Yeah. They also have some type of matching fund for healthcare. Now it's typically it's it's they're getting a discount rate because they're buying In many bulk. policies, yeah. but they're also usually contributing to that healthcare fund. Right. There's also the employer matching fund for Stock your retirement. Four hundred one k and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's typically I know that the the business that I had been working for. They had contributed more to my retirement plan than I did. Mm-hmm. And that came in a variety of things. They had a vesting program where you would get, you know, a certain amount of your pay every year being contributed. And it was, to my knowledge, it wasn't even capped. Um, they would, they it was like 5% of your annual pay. And, um, and then they would also contribute a certain amount for their profit sharing. So... Mm-hmm. You know, everybody talks about, oh, this company, they're they're giving all this money to their shareholders. The company I had the privilege to work for, the shareholders, a lot of them were employees. And so we were getting some of that money back for our So I would say that one of the other things that I miss is the, like now there's such decision fatigue you're you're never off duty like you have all of these things there's no collaboration with other teams like when when i was managing in in the healthcare profession like i had a payroll person and we had a quality control person and we had an it person and so like you could delegate certain things to other people and in this business, like it's all us. That's it. Yeah, we have to do yeah. everything. Well, unless you want to hire an IT person, and so that is that is definitely a thing. Is distribution of tasks? Is there's mm-hmm. only two of us? If you're doing it by yourself, there's only one of you. Right. Um, you know, you want to have your accounting done properly. You either need to learn about accounting or hire a bookkeeper mm-hmm. or hire a CPA. You you know, you want to figure out how do I best market my products? Now I need to be an expert at marketing or hire somebody who is. Yeah. Yeah. So I can definitely see that. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think about like what else maybe I... Sometimes it's nice having... And, and, and like, don't get me wrong here, but like, sometimes it's nice to have a boss that you do have to be accountable to because there are some days that you, you're like, God, I just don't want to list today. And we do because we're a little bit, you know, um, I think you let me just assume that role to, to be the, boss. the accountable boss. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I don't feel like I have those days that I'm like, man, I wish I had a boss to tell me what to do right now. <laughs> I just don't. Well, I have you. So I have you as my boss. Like I have to be accountable to you. Cause you know, yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I can think... see if we didn't have each other, mm-hmm. it would be so much harder. Yeah. To... I think having somebody that you can, um, shift some of that accountability and some of that stress on is definitely could definitely be a a pro and go, you know what? I don't have to worry about how that bill is getting paid today Mm -hmm. because somebody else is in charge of that. Yeah. Having an accounts receivable person and be Mm -hmm. like, "Ah, they are going to take care of that. I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I have a lot of that with you. Cause like yeah. you, you do take the default role in the business. Um, so like answering the, the YouTube comments that, that kind of falls, like we talk about it sometimes. Um, but you know, that kind of falls on you while I'm working on homework with the boy or, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're able to kind of divide that because we do have the two of us, but mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that, that having to make every decision in the entire business is, it can be a lot. Yeah. A lot. Well, and that's why we streamline that way. We don't have to make decisions more than once. We, yeah. we, we know when we have a process yeah, in place, we know like we don't have to think is. about it again. Yeah. So I, I think about a lot of things about work and, you know, the, the, the mandate to leave your home, you know, um, sometimes just having the, the requirement to, you know, you gotta go take a shower. You mm -hmm. gotta, put some clothes on and get out the door. Um, that, that changes your psyche, you know, if, it does. And, and we utilize our YouTube videos. Like, no, mm -hmm. I can't go on camera if I haven't done my hair. Right. You know, so, that's real. um, you know, that's one of those things. Like if I just sat here and I didn't have any accountability at all, you know, it'd be in three days and be like, why haven't you showered in three days? <laughs> like you've no, you haven't left the house in three days. Yeah. So like having a reason to get out of bed, go show yourself in public mm -hmm. having, even if it's superficial interaction with other humans, Yeah. there there's value there. There is. And, and we even talk about like, okay, well, we're going to go to the auction this week. We don't intend to buy anything, but we're going to go just because there's just humans. We have to, yeah. Sometimes you do have to have that human interaction. Yeah. Um, you know, even when you're like, oh, really they're here today or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to deal with, you know, I don't want to people like sometimes you don't, sometimes you're just like, okay, my, 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 my buckets full of peopling today. Yeah. Like I can't anymore, but you sometimes you do get empty. Even if you're introverted, sometimes you do have to have some human interaction. Right. Right. So I think that's all that really comes to mind is, you know, the stability and the, mm -hmm. the structure that comes with, having a job that you have to go to. Yeah. Um, it, it is, a it is, there is benefits there. Sure. You know, uh, I don't want, I don't want people to think that it's all sunshine and roses because we're self-employed. The reality is we still have to get up and do the stuff every day. It's yeah. We just don't have the support structure. Somebody had said in the comments do. that, um, you know, you, you, you still have to work at like a job. Even your dream mm -hmm. job is still a job. Right. Um, you know, and that, that's very true. There's, there's a lot that goes into this. There's a lot more than you would, than you would think. Um, that was one more thing that I do want to mention. It, the benefit of working outside the home is that people look at you differently when you work outside the home and you have a career, you have a title, um, then, then people do give you more leeway i guess or or respect or whatever the the thing is like when you when you work from home people are like oh well you're not busy right you're not you're not working working so you know we can bother you we can ask mm -hmm. you to do this for us we can interrupt your day um when when i was working at the hospital like nobody expected so, to mm -hmm. to like that they could yeah. interrupt me in the middle of my day. They're yeah, like, they oh, no, Cinema's working, right. so you they can't. They were calling you at work. Or if, if they, they didn't call, that... they wouldn't expect me to answer if I was working. Right, right. So, yes, I, I do agree that, that that exists to an extent. But we did see the same thing. We both worked unconventional jobs at different times in our in our relationship. When I worked, and yeah, when we when worked, you night worked shift, midnights, when people I worked had nights, no respect for, no. you know, you, they'd call at, at 11 o'clock in the morning and you're like, holy crap, I just fell asleep. Why on earth would you be calling me? I don't call you at 11 o'clock at night. I don't call you at three o'clock in the morning. Like, mm -hmm. you know, or they would, they would schedule, you know, big family events after I just worked a 12 hour shift and it would be scheduled for 10 a.m. And I just got off work at 8 a.m. And I'm like, okay, so I can't take a nap. I am just, and then it's going to be a four or five hour event. And I'm just like, 
yeah, I'm just toast. Like, oh, who needs sleep? Nah, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I think that there's limits. Yeah. There's limits on how much if people respect. If you're working your a conventional nine to five, right. people respect that. <laughs> <laughs> So that's our thoughts. Yep. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and let us know what your experience is with reselling, whether you're a part-time reseller, just doing it as a gig, or mm -hmm. if this is a full-time job for you, what do you miss about conventional work? Yeah. Or what do you not want to give up if you're working part-time, you know, for mm -hmm. reselling, what do you not want to give up, um, yeah. you know, from, from that corporate stability? Yeah. That's a big step. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks so much, guys. We really appreciate you. Good luck to you guys out there. Like and subscribe.